Do you know enough HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in order to get your first job as a developer? Well, I'm about to go through exactly how much you need to know and if any like JavaScript libraries are necessary, such as React or Angular as well. This is a super common question that I get all of the time from people just starting out learning to code and even people who have been studying web development for a while. So you've been learning web development, you've learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, maybe even some React or Angular, and you might even have a little bit of confidence at this point, but are you ready to start applying for jobs? Do you know enough? This is a really tough position to be in. And I remember when I was first thinking about switching careers from a firefighter to a web developer. And by the way, we all have different walks of life and backgrounds that we come from, and it's gonna be different for everyone. For me personally, I actually did quite a bit of freelancing prior to switching careers. And to be honest, I think I actually prolonged applying for jobs longer than I should have because I was scared. I was scared of rejection, scared of failure. So for me, I worked in the e-commerce industry and that's kind of how everything got started for me in web development. Basically, I worked on a bunch of CMS platforms and a CMS platform is just a, it's a content management system. It can be pretty broad, but I was working on Shopify, big commerce, stuff like WordPress. And it actually turned out to be a pretty good way for me to break into the tech industry because learning how to use these platforms is of course a lot easier than learning to code, you know, learning JavaScript or Python and actually being a front end or full stack web developer. When you're working with a CMS like that, you don't necessarily have to write as much code as you would in a typical web developer position. And this was a really good spot for me to learn more about HTML and CSS and JavaScript, PHP, and just kind of how the web works in general. Since it was a very entry level position, it allowed me to get away with not knowing as much, but I also got to learn a lot about like hosting and just how certain technologies and plugins interact with one another. Okay, but how do you even know if you're ready to start applying for jobs. You do a quick job search on Indeed or something like that and for an entry level web developer and what do you see? Entry level web developer must have two years experience, a bachelor's degree or equivalent in a computer science related field, must be able to model code and test in C++ and Java, Python, JavaScript and have an understanding of SQL or another querying language. They want you to have a familiarity with AWS or cloud computing is a plus. They may even ask for experience with the containers like Docker or Kubernetes. Dude, are you, are you freaking kidding me? How in the world is that an entry level web developer? I think the entry level requirements are really getting out of control in my opinion. Some of these companies are putting out senior level expectations for entry level pay. But here's the thing. You don't have to know everything listed in the job description in order to apply. Oftentimes companies are just casting a huge net trying to catch whatever they can. My rule of thumb and for you know what I follow and what I recommend others follow is if you match half of what they're asking for, then just apply. There's really nothing to lose and everything to gain. Even if you completely blow the interview, assuming that you even get an interview at all, which is rare, that's really valuable experience on your end, especially if you're new to interviewing for tech jobs. You can get a feel of what they're asking you and, and how everything works. And just to solidify what I just said, for my current job right now, I actually failed one of the technical interviews and I still got an offer. Without going too much into it, I it was for a front end developer role and they gave me two technical interviews. So they gave me a front end interview, which I did quite well on, but then they also gave me a SQL interview. It was a remote interview, but we were on Zoom and it was kind of awkward to say the least. Cool about it though, and we joke about it now because we both work together, but he saw that I was struggling to answer. So he asked if I needed any help or direction. I was like, yeah, I really don't know much SQL at all. I understand the basic create table, you know, insert into, select all from, etc. He took the time to explain to me how he would answer the questions and then we hopped off the call. Yeah, I got off that Zoom like, well, I'm not getting that job. And to my surprise, the manager actually called me about 15 minutes later. And th this is another guy. He said, hey, I heard how the SQL interview went. There was a little bit of a pause. And then he said, hey, don't worry about it. You're good. I'm good. I was like, what do you mean I'm good? I just, I just bombed that thing. And he said, look, this role doesn't have a ton of SQL involved. Plus you didn't pretend to know what you were doing and try and BS your way through the interview. You were honest and you told him that you didn't really know much SQL and then you asked him to explain it to you. He said, we really appreciate the fact that you were straight up and honest about it. Plus, since we have a data team that writes most of our queries, he said, I'm not really worried about it. Man, what, what a relief. I ended up getting a formal offer only a few days later. Now, again, this was a front end role. And like I said, we have a data team now that handles all of our queries. Um, if I was interviewing for a data team, then that would certainly be alarming and 
I assume the outcome would be way different. But since then, I've been able to learn more about SQL and get more comfortable writing queries. I say all of this to say that you don't have to know everything on the job to apply. I mean, if they're looking for a C-sharp developer and you barely learn JavaScript, then maybe you should skip that one. But if you feel like your skill level is even remotely close to what they're asking for, then just apply. I don't really care what anybody says. It's good experience. And learning to interview and portray your skills in and of itself is a good skill. An interview is like a sales call and you need to sell yourself. Just make sure you know what you're selling. It's really hard as an entry level web developer to know when you're ready to start applying for jobs because well, you, you just don't have the experience yet. You've never worked as a developer. You don't know what the expectations are. You don't know what the day to day is going to look like. When you just start learning to code, you're watching tutorials, um, you're following blog articles. There's a lot of handholding going on. And what do I mean by that? You're, you're following alongside a video, you're following a tutorial, um, some documentation, you're building like a to do app, something very elementary, and you're getting spoon fed exactly what to do, when to do it and where to type it. And if you get an error, you just rewind the video 30 seconds and you're good. Of course, when you work for a company, it's not going to be that way. You're going to be the one creating, right? So what can you do to prepare yourself for that experience? The only thing that's going to start to prepare you for that is going to be building things that you don't know how to build and that you can't follow a tutorial to build. Of course, to even get to that level or the fastest way to get to that level, in my opinion, is to follow a course or tutorial. It's the easiest way to learn the basic syntax and how to structure your projects. But once you go through a course or two, assuming they're well-rounded courses, then you're ready to start something on your own. I know it, it may not seem like you're ready, but just start and try to build something that aligns with your interest. Most importantly, my advice and what I did was I started building applications that have authentication. They have you know a way for a user to sign up and sign in. They have a way for a user to log out and some sort of database to store uh, user information or activity and some kind of dynamic routing. Building a project that follows those guidelines will really give you a good understanding of how applications work. But when are you ready for this step even. I'd say once you've built a few landing pages, you've learned some JavaScript, you understand the DOM, you can write functions, classes. Once you get comfortable with doing that, then I'd start playing around with some sort of JavaScript libraries like React or Angular, then add in some sort of database. Once you have a pretty good understanding of how a library works, such as React, for example, then it's time to start the larger project. I'd probably start with a serverless database, something like Firebase or Supabase. I'm currently building a Supabase project and I'll probably make a video on it. I have a lot of Firebase projects, so I'll put a link up here if you wanna see one of those projects that I built and you can follow along. This will be a lot easier than spinning up a node server and writing a bunch of complex queries, at least as a beginner. And you can build pretty much whatever kind of app you want using those tech stacks. Also, don't think that you have to build a whole application from start to finish without like Googling how to do something in order to apply for a job. I used to put those types of limitations on myself. I thought like once I can build these applications without looking stuff up and without Googling, then I'll be ready to start applying for jobs. But until then, I'm not ready. But the truth is there's so much information out there and tech stacks, plus they're always changing. It'd be impossible to remember everything. So rather than memorizing certain things, I just tried to understand how things worked. So what kind of projects encompass authentication and databases and routing, et cetera, this could be something like an e-commerce store, a real-time chat application, or even something a little more simple than that. But those things can get pretty complex depending on the level you wanna take it to. A simple one would be a to-do app, but with all the functionalities. So picture this, you build a to-do app, but a user has to sign up for an account and then sign in in order to log a to-do. That way, when I sign in, I can't see your to-dos, and when you sign in, you can't see my to-dos. So that covers authentication right there. Then you could make sure a user can not only create a to-do, but you can edit a to-do and delete a to-do. And this will be from something like Supabase or Firebase to start off with. And to make this even more in depth and kind of take it to the next level, you could add in some dynamic routing. So what do I mean by this? Okay, so say you log in, right? So once you log in, you can create a to-do along with maybe add a description, but you can't see the description until you click on the to-do and it routes you to like myapp.com slash walk the dog or slash wash the car and you just set the route to whatever the title of the to-do is. This is something that's fairly easily done with something like React Router if you're building a project in React. Building an application like this kind of seems funny but it actually gives you a well-rounded understanding of how the front end works and the back end works 
on serverless databases, especially working with React, understanding state and the use effect and routes. So if you wanna see how to build an application like that from start to finish, you can even follow along with me. I'll put up two videos right here. So make sure you click on one of those. Thanks for watching you guys. I'll see you on the next one.